Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 29th of July. First batch of French Rafale fighter jets land in India. US and NATO welcome e truce urge intra Afghan talks. And climate change challenging tiger conservation, says Nepal's PM Oli. And now for all the details. The first batch of five French Rafale fighter jets landed at the Ambala Air Base in northern India to join the Indian Air Force fleet. The planes are expected to boost India's air power massively amid tension with China and Pakistan. India will be receiving a total of 36 aircraft in what it cited as the country's biggest defense deal worth 8.7 billion US dollars. The Indian Air Force Base in India's northern Ambala city on Wednesday received five Dassault Rafale jets, the first batch of the 36 aircraft which India will be receiving from the French defence manufacturers. The twin-engine Canard Delta Wing multi-role fighter jets took off from France on Monday and arrived in Ambala after covering a distance of 7,000 kilometres with air-to-air refuelling and a single stop in the UAE. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomed the Rafale jets and posted a tweet in Sanskrit with a video of the Rafale making a landing. A water salute was also given to the five fighter planes after their landing at the air base. I would say that today India can very proudly stand and say that yes, our borders are defended, our air cover that is extended to the entire nation is there and none of these adversaries, whether it is China or Pakistan, can ever think of trying to penetrate this. India had signed an intergovernmental agreement with France in 2016 to purchase 36 Rafale jets under a $8.7 billion deal, often cited as India's biggest defence deal to boost its combat capabilities. With its multi-role capabilities including electronic warfare, air defence, ground support and in-depth strikes, the Rafale lends air superiority to the Indian Air Force amid tensions with China and Pakistan. India's COVID-19 tally surged past 1.5 million mark on Wednesday, with that toll at 34,193 across the country. Amid the cases spike, various forms of lockdown have been imposed in different states of India as state governments try to control spread of the virus. As India continues to witness a spike in coronavirus cases daily, various forms of lockdowns have been imposed in parts of the country as the state governments are trying to curb the virus spread their way. The state of West Bengal has announced two days of complete lockdown every week in order to stem the rising number of infections until August 31. Earlier, the bi-weekly lockdown was to be observed till July 31 but has been postponed citing the spike in infection cases. Under a complete lockdown, only essential services including medical facilities, media and movement of goods vehicles remain open. Meanwhile, central Madhya Pradesh state has also announced a similar two-day lockdown each week, but only in districts with high number of virus cases. A one-day lockdown was also imposed in Etu Manur of India's Kerala state on Wednesday due to rising COVID-19 cases in the city. The national lockdown across India was lifted after 68 days from June 1. But the Interior Ministry has allowed state governments to enforce lockdowns or any other restrictions to control the spread of COVID-19. India's COVID-19 tally crossed 1.5 million mark on Wednesday with the death toll at 34,193 across the country. There are 509,447 active cases of coronavirus infection in the country as the recovery rate has improved to 64.51%. In news from Pakistan, a massive protest was recently held by locals and workers of Pakistan's People's Party against frequent load shedding and overbilling in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi.
The protesters claim they receive hefty bills despite regular power outages. A massive protest was held recently by workers of Pakistan People's Party against frequent load shedding and overbilling in Pakistan's financial capital, Karachi. The protesters raised slogans against the country's ruling Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf Party and the K Electric, which supplies electricity in the city. People residing in Karachi, Pakistan's largest city, claim they receive unusually high electricity bills despite less consumption and regular power outages and there is no one to question the suppliers. आपने ढाई रुपए दो रुपए उनासी पैसे आपने फी यूनिट इजाफा करने के बाद आपने वापस ले लिया खास तौर के ऊपर के इलेक्ट्रिक के मामला के के इलेक्ट्रिक के जो भी मामला चल रहे हैं इसमें के इलेक्ट्रिक के चीफ एग्जेक्टिव को फौरी तौर पर रिजाइन देना चाहिए और विफाक अपनी तहवील में के इलेक्ट्रिक को ले कोई चीज़ छोड़ी ही नहीं है वादे तो बहुत बड़े बड़े कर दिए लेकिन अब सिर्फ आवाम अपना सर पीट रही है कि हाय अल्लाह हम क्या करें आटा चोर चीनी चोर पेट्रोल चोर बहरान इतने हैं कि जिसकी कोई हद नहीं इन्होंने पी को तबाह कर दिया कोई ऐसी चीज़ इन्होंने छोड़ी ही नहीं है द प्रोटेस्ट इज ऑल्सो रेस्ड कंसर्न ओवर राइजिंग इन्फ्लेशन एंड ब्लेम द गवर्नमेंट फॉर इट्स इनकॉम्पिटेंट पॉलिसीज They said the government has continued to completely ignore their pleas and the injustice meted on them. The United States and the NATO have welcomed the Taliban's announcement of a three-day ceasefire over the Muslim festival of Eid ahead of the intra-Afghan negotiations that are expected in the coming weeks. The Afghan government has also welcomed the ceasefire announced by the militant group on Tuesday. The US Special Envoy Zalmi Khalilzad has welcomed the announcement of a 3-day ceasefire this week during the Muslim festival of Eid al-Adha in Afghanistan. Khalilzad in a tweet on Wednesday said, "We welcome the Taliban announcement of an Eid ceasefire and wish the Afghan National Security Forces continued honor in the service of Afghan people and thank them for their commitment to Afghanistan." Meanwhile, NATO in a tweet also welcomed the ceasefire. saying it is an important step in the afghan peace process that must be lead to earliest possible start of intra afghan negotiations on tuesday the taliban announced the ceasefire during eid al adha ahead of the intra afghan negotiations that are expected in the coming weeks the afghan government has welcomed this ceasefire but speculations over taliban's intentions for the future government since the signing of us taliban peace agreement in late february are still increasing in news from nepal nepal's prime minister kp sharma oli while addressing the nation on the occasion of global tiger day on tuesday said that the climate change is one of the factors that has increased challenges in tiger conservation efforts The Himalayan nation which counted 235 tigers in 2018 aims to increase the numbers to 250 by 2022. Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli on Tuesday addressing the nation on the occasion of Global Tiger Day said that the climate change is one of the factors that has increased challenge in tiger conservation efforts oli stressed on preservation of vegetation of tiger spray in order to keep its numbers increasing as well as keep the ecology in balance in the year 2009 the number of tigers in the himalayan nation was recorded to be 121 In the last census of 2018 Nepal counted a total of 235 tigers in its national parks including Chitwan, Bardia, Banke and Parsa. Bhag pai ne desharule gare ka samrakshan ka athak prayas swaru ka bavjud bashasthan ko nas, bardo manav banyajantu dwandha, chori shikar tatha bag ka anga ko avaidh vyapar, jalvayu parivartan ka jokhim ra rog vyadhi le garda bag samrakshan ka chunauti din pratidin thabidai cha. Nepal in the end of the last decade along with 13 other countries had agreed on a framework to double the number of carnivore and has been inching closer to meet it the himalayan nation has set a target of taking the number of tigers to 250 
by 2022 when the next census will be conducted. More on news from Nepal. At a time when the ruling Nepal Communist Party is already encountering severe turbulence, Party co-chair Pushpakamal Dahal on Tuesday unilaterally convened a meeting of the powerful standing committee in absence of Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. Oli had postponed the meeting but a faction of Dahal supporters still attended the meeting. Rift between Nepal's Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and the other co-chair of the ruling Nepal Communist Party Pushpakamal Dahal deepened on Tuesday as Oli unilaterally postponed a scheduled meeting of the party's standing committee. The rival faction led by Dahal in a dramatic move, however, held the standing committee meeting in the absence of Oli and termed Oli's unilateral move to postpone the meeting against the party statute, local media reported. A power struggle has been brewing in the ruling NCP after top party leaders demanded Oli's resignation saying his recent anti-India remarks were neither politically correct nor diplomatically appropriate. They are also against Oli's autocratic style of functioning. Moving on to news from Bangladesh. At a time when cattle markets and farmhouses in parts of Bangladesh are brimming with sacrificial animals ahead of Eid al Adha, the Muslim festival of sacrifice, two giant bulls in capital Dhaka are drawing attention of people who have also been clicking selfies with them. The bulls are being offered for sacrifice on the occasion of Eid at record prices of nearly 74,000 US dollars. Muslims apart from bulls sacrifice goats on Eid al-Adha, which is why the occasion is famously known as Bakr or Bakri Eid in Urdu. The sacrifice is done to commemorate Prophet Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son Ismail on God's command. An octogenarian in Western India has grabbed eyeballs by performing stunts with sticks with sheer agility. The 85-year-old says she has been practicing the martial arts skills since she was 8 years old and continues to do so with pride. An octogenarian woman in India's Western Pune city has grabbed eyeballs by performing stunts with sticks with sheer agility. A video of 85-year-old Shanta Pawar performing Lathi Kathi on the city's streets has been trending on social media in India. Lathi Kathi is an Indian traditional martial art form of performing stunts with baton. So, I have a tree and a tree and a tree and I have a tree and I have a tree. तो क्या बजता करके लोग देखते हैं तभी मैं ये लाठी घुमाना चालू करती हूँ तो वो लोग देखते हैं फिर देख के मुझे देते हैं पेट के लिए मदद करते हैं तो किधर मेरे को पचास रुपया सौ रुपया किधर बीस रुपया ऐसा मैं दिन भर करते रहती हूँ पवार हैज बीन परफॉर्मिंग दी मार्शल आर्ट्स सिंस शी वाज एट इयर ओल्ड एंड कंटिन्यूज टू डू सो विथ प्राइड her martial arts skills have also caught the attention of Bollywood celebrities. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. First batch of French Rafale fighter jets land in India. US and NATO welcome e troops urge intra Afghan talks. And climate change challenging tiger conservation says Nepal's PM Oli. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.